in the realm of nightmares where shadows dance and terror reigns. These are the instruments of our demise, the tools that haunt our dreams and slash through our screens. Join me as we dive into the arsenal of horror villains and rank the 10 most iconic, deadly, and downright chilling weapons ever wielded on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. Horror movie weapons are more than just tools of destruction. They are extensions of the villains who wield them, physical manifestations of their malice and madness. From the gleaming blade of Michael Myers' kitchen knife to the gnarled, razor-sharp claws of Freddy Krueger's glove, these weapons are as iconic as the characters themselves. They evoke fear, fascination, and a morbid curiosity in viewers, becoming synonymous with the films and the franchises they belong to. Beyond their visual impact, horror movie weapons often hold symbolic significance. The butcher knife can represent domesticity turned deadly, the chainsaw a relentless, unstoppable force, and the hook a twisted, grotesque parody of the human hand. These weapons are more than mere props. They are story elements, contributing to the atmosphere of dread and the visceral thrill of the kill. They are what make horror movies so unforgettable, leaving an indelible mark on our collective consciousness. And on that note, grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number 10 is Candyman's Hook. Candyman's Hook isn't just a weapon, it's a symbol that has become deeply ingrained in horror cinema. Its iconic status stems from several factors, including its visual impact, the symbolic meaning, and its association with such a compelling story. Visually, the hook is both simple and terrifying. Its metallic glint and sharp point immediately communicate danger and pain. It's a visceral image that taps into our primal fear of being pierced or dismembered. The hook's simplicity makes it instantly recognizable and easy to replicate, contributing to its cultural proliferation through fan art, Halloween costumes, and merchandise. Beyond its visual appeal, the hook carries a deeper symbolic weight. It's a physical manifestation of Candyman's tragic past, a constant reminder of the brutality inflicted upon him. The hook also represents Candyman's power and the threat he poses. It's a weapon of vengeance and a tool for claiming new victims, making it a potent symbol of both pain and power. The hook's iconic status is also intertwined with the compelling story of Candyman himself. As a tragic figure who is both victim and villain, Candyman elicits a complex mix of fear and empathy. The hook is a crucial element in his legend, serving as a visual shorthand for his story and the fear he inspires. It's a symbol that invites curiosity and dread, drawing you into Candyman's dark world. Next up at number nine, we have Cropsey's Garden Shears. Visually, the Garden Shears are an unsettling weapon. Their large size and sharp blades evoke a sense of brutality and threat. Unlike more common weapons like knives or machetes, the Garden Shears are unexpected and thus more disturbing. Their unusual shape and metallic gleam make them visually striking and instantly recognizable, contributing to their iconic status. The Garden Shears also carry a symbolic weight within the film. They represent Cropsey's twisted psyche and his desire to inflict pain and disfigurement. The shears, typically used for you know, pruning and shaping plants, here they're turned into tools of violence and destruction. This inversion of their intended purpose adds to Cropsey's character and makes the shears a chilling symbol of his malice. Moreover, the shears are intrinsically linked to Cropsey himself. They are his signature weapon, the tool he uses to terrorize and mutilate his victims. Their association with Cropsey's reign of terror and his grotesque appearance solidifies their place in horror iconography. The shears become a visual shorthand for Cropsey's character, instantly evoking that fear and dread that is so necessary for these villains. Coming in at number 8 is the Driller Killer's Guitar. From Slumber Party Massacre 2, this weapon has achieved a unique and iconic status within the slasher genre, blending music and mayhem in a way that's both disturbing and unforgettable. Visually, the guitar is a grotesque spectacle. Its body houses a fully functional drill bit, transforming a symbol of artistic expression into a weapon of violence. The juxtaposition of the sleek guitar with the menacing drill creates a very unique image. Beyond its visual impact, the guitar also carries symbolic weight. It represents the driller killer's twisted psyche, a fusion of his artistic aspirations and murderous impulses. 
The guitar turned weapon becomes a metaphor for the character's deranged creativity where music and violence are intertwined in a disturbing dance of death. The guitar's iconic status is also fueled by its association with the driller killer himself. It's his signature weapon, the tool he uses to terrorize and kill his victims. The image of the driller killer clad in rockabilly attire and wielding the guitar drill is instantly recognizable. The guitar becomes a visual shorthand for the character's sadistic nature and his unique brand of terror. Our number seven entrant is Leatherface's Chainsaw. This weapon has become synonymous with terror and remains one of the most recognizable weapons in cinema history. Its iconic status is due to a combination of its raw power, unsettling sound, and symbolic association with the terrifying villain. The chainsaw itself is a visceral and brutal weapon. Its roaring engine and the sight of its spinning teeth evoke a primal fear of dismemberment and violence. Unlike more traditional weapons, the chainsaw is loud and messy, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. This raw power and unrelenting force make it a truly terrifying weapon both on the screen and in the imaginations of the viewers. Beyond its physical attributes, the chainsaw also carries a symbolic weight within the story. It represents Leatherface's savagery and the brutality of his family. The chainsaw, typically used for manual labor, is transformed into a tool of murder, reflecting the twisted values of the cannibalistic clan. This inversion makes the chainsaw a chilling symbol of this family's depravity. At number six, we have the Silver Shamrock Masks. These masks from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, have achieved iconic status for a number of reasons. Firstly, their design is strikingly simple, yet memorable, with the three distinct faces, the witch, the skull, and the pumpkin. They're instantly recognizable, even decades later. This simplicity is key to their effectiveness, as it allows them to be easily replicated and reproduced, further cementing their place in pop culture. Secondly, the masks are intrinsically linked to the film's unique and unsettling premise. In Halloween 3, the masks are not just Halloween costumes, but deadly weapons as well. This dark twist elevates them from mere props to symbols of a sinister plot, making them both fascinating and just downright disturbing. Finally, the Silver Shamrock masks have transcended their original context and become a staple of Halloween imagery. They are frequently referenced and parodied in other films, television shows, and even video games. Their association with the holiday, combined with their creepy backstory, has made them a popular choice for costumes and decorations, ensuring their continued relevance and cultural significance. Number five in this ranking rumble is Jason's machete. The machete has become an iconic symbol of horror for several reasons. First and foremost, its visual simplicity is striking. It's both rustic and menacing. This unadorned design allows the machete to be easily recognizable and reproducible. It's literally a pop culture icon in itself. Secondly, the machete is intrinsically linked to Jason's character and the franchise's brutality despite being just one of many weapons he uses. It's used to dispatch countless victims in gruesome and creative ways. This association with violence and terror has made the machete a symbol of fear, making it both fascinating and just scary. Lastly, the machete has transcended its original place and become a staple of slasher movie imagery. There's a good chance that someone who isn't a horror fan like we are will all think of Jason and his machete when they think of slasher movies. And I know you're thinking that this should probably be higher up on the list, but the truth is there are just some weapons that I like more. Coming in at number four is the Reverse Bear Trap. The Reverse Bear Trap is one of the most iconic torture devices in horror film history, holding a prominent position within the Saw franchise. Its terrifying design and gruesome implications have cemented its place as an all-timer. It may be just one of the numerous traps used in the franchise, but to me it's definitely the most iconic. The trap itself is a metal contraption that fits around the victim's head with a hinged jaw that is forced open if they fail to escape in time. This macabre design is visually striking and immediately communicates the extreme threat. The trap's simple yet effective mechanism combined with the suspense of watching the victim struggle against time creates such a visceral experience. The reverse bear trap's iconic status is further amplified by its role in the Saw series. It is one of the first traps seen in the franchise, appearing in the original film that helped launch the series. But it also reappears in multiple sequels, even being used to kill Jill Tuck. This recurring presence reinforces the trap's importance to the franchise and solidifies its place in the minds of the fans. Our number three entrant is going to be Michael Myers' Knife. 
This weapon has become an iconic symbol of horror, synonymous with the Halloween franchise and the slasher genre as a whole. Its simple yet menacing design, coupled with its association with one of cinema's most terrifying killers, has solidified its place in horror history. The knife itself is a large, unassuming kitchen knife with a long, sharp blade and a simple wooden handle. While not inherently unique, its use by Michael Myers elevates it to a chilling status. The knife being ordinary contrasts with the brutal acts it is used for, highlighting the unsettling banality of evil. Its plain appearance also makes it universally recognizable and easy to replicate, further solidifying its iconic status. In the Halloween films, the knife is almost an extension of Michael Myers, just like the mask. It's a constant companion in his relentless pursuit of victims. Its frequent appearances and the graphic violence it inflicts have made it a visual shorthand for the character's brutality and the franchise's chilling tone. The knife has also become a popular prop for Halloween costumes and fan art alike, further cementing its status in the horror iconography. Number two in this ranking rumble is the Sentinel Sphere. This chilling icon from the Phantasm franchise exudes an aura of menace and fascination. Its seamless chrome exterior conceals a deadly arsenal of blades, drills, and other sinister implements. This levitating ball of death is the signature weapon of the Tall Man, a malevolent undertaker with otherworldly powers. The sphere's design is sleek and minimalist, yet undeniably menacing. Its ability to hover and maneuver effortlessly adds an unsettling element of unpredictability. The sphere's attacks are swift and brutal, leaving victims with gruesome injuries, even draining them of blood. Its otherworldly nature adds to the horror, as it seems to be impervious to conventional weapons. The Sentinel Sphere is just so cool, and that stems from its unique combination of style and lethality. It's a visual representation of the tall man's power and the film's surreal atmosphere. Its presence on screen instantly elevates the tension and dread. It's become an iconic symbol of horror, inspiring countless imitations and references in pop culture. All right, it's time for the final entrant. What do you think it is? Our number one entrant in this ranking rumble is Freddy's Glove. It's a grotesque fusion of metal and razor sharp blades that stands as the most iconic horror weapon due to its chilling design and visceral terror it inspires. The glove's homemade appearance, cobbled together from scrap metal and kitchen knives, adds a layer of disturbing realism to its nightmarish aesthetic. The elongated finger-like blades evoke a primal fear of claws, amplified by the screeching sound they make against metal surfaces. The glove's symbolism is deeply rooted in our collective subconscious. It represents a twisted distortion of the human hand, a symbol of creation and comfort transformed into a tool of brutal violence. The fact that Freddy wields this weapon in dreams, a realm where we are most vulnerable, adds a layer of psychological terror. The glove is not merely a physical weapon. It is an extension of Freddy's twisted psyche and a manifestation of our deepest fears. The glove's enduring popularity is a testament to its effectiveness in evoking fear and fascination alike. It has become synonymous with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and has inspired countless imitations and references in pop culture. Its distinct design and chilling symbolism have solidified its place as the most iconic horror weapon, a testament to the power of visual storytelling and the enduring appeal of fear. But there you have it. Those are the top 10 most iconic horror weapons of all time, according to me. I'm curious what your favorite horror weapons are, so let me know down in the comments. If you're interested in Redcon 1 products, my merchandise on Pro Wrestling Tees, or supporting the channel over on Patreon, check out the links down in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed this look at some of horror's deadliest weapons, be sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.